His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. So, Father, we bless you tonight. We thank you so very much for the word of God tonight. We receive the word of God tonight in us, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, that you are helping us to understand your word even greater, to move and to have our being in you. And we celebrate that tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We give you all the honor, all the praise, all the glory. It is thine, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen well good evening to everyone god bless you thank you for being here all right we're going to just jump back into where we were last week but if you would just for the sake of the connection with this with the with the 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 cds and the dvds and all of that and live screen and how y'all doing live screen god bless you um let's go to romans chapter 10 verse 17 romans chapter 10 verse 17 and the Bible reads this way, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So what we realize it was not just hearing anything, but hearing the word of God. So faith comes by hearing, hearing in the word of God. And so um, also if we connect Galatians chapter 5 to that, where we've been um, understanding that faith comes by hearing, but Galatians 5 and 6 says, faith worketh by love, right? Yeah. Galatians 5 and 6 says, faith worketh by love. Yeah. So even though faith comes by healing, it only works by love. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, all right, great. So that's the place we, we are. We went to, to deal with the word itself because if faith comes by hearing, that's the first place you've got to start. You've got to start with hearing the word so that now that faith that you have that you hear can start functioning. And it functions by the love of your life, right? Yeah. By functioning in love. So if we go to, again, back to St. John chapter 1, St. John chapter 1 is where we were. And we were looking at that verse of in the beginning. It is power packed with a lot of stuff. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Okay, if you keep your finger there. If you keep your finger there and run all the way to the beginning of your Bible and go to verse 1, right? Okay. And it's interesting, too, with this Bible. That's funny. That is funny. I'm not going to tell you about that. Um, but Genesis 1, 1, right? It says, in the beginning, God did what? He created the heavens and the earth okay i know some now say heaven but it's heavens it is s on the word and we know that based on the hebrew word that's used hebrew word that's used there make sure we know that it's plural so in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth okay and which connects right back to saint john in the beginning was the word so how did he create the heavens and the earth by the word and the word was with God and the word was God. It says in, the, in verse 2 says, the same was in the beginning with God. What, what was what same? The word was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And him represents the word, right? All things were made by him and without him, the word, was not anything made that was made. Okay? And so um, I'm going to read these verses because I'll come back to them. In him, in the word, was what? Life. And the life was the light of men. So the word was life and the life was light. He says, and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness couldn't stop it. The darkness comprehended it not. Okay. All right. So, th so therein is the first five verses that deal with Genesis 1-1 actually um, those first five verses really deal with Genesis 1-1 and if we ran back over to Genesis 1 and look at Genesis 1 1 again in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and verse 2 and the earth was without form and void and darkness 
was upon the face of the deep. Now look at this. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. He says, and God says, let there be light. And there was light. Okay. And it says, okay. <laughs> it says, in him was life and the life was the light of men. Right. Okay, and God says, "Let there be light." So the very first thing that God said was, "Let there be light." Yes. Okay. Um, okay. He says, "And God saw the light, and that the and that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Right. And the light and the light He called day, and the darkness He called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And so all of that has to do with that in that beginning. Amen." Amen. So we're dealing with um, some of this from a, from a way of um, the place where I always, you know, just mess with mother from all these numbers, you know, and, and we got to deal with it again tonight, mother. I'm so sorry. You ready? As long as you ready. If I got you ready, I see. If I got, if I, if if I teach you, I can teach everybody. That's right. That's right. If, if, if you get it, everybody should get it, ain't it? That's right. That's what we got. Uh, <laughs> um, so, I right, go if you would please to um, um, back to. Gen I'm sorry. Back to St. John one one. Back to St. John one one again. And let's look back at St. John 1.1. 1, 1. And first, before we go there, I want, I want to show you some things because there are some interesting facts that's going to show up tonight that's in some of this. And also, what I want you to also do is to be able to notice when some of this is happening. Okay? Uh, let me go back. Let me go over here for a moment to Genesis 1.1 1, 1 again and tell you that, remember, Genesis 1.1 1, 1, Genesis ver chapter 1 verse 1 the total value of that verse is 2701 okay um, the total value of that verse remember all of the Hebrew letters are numbers all of the Greek letters are numbers and so if you add up that verse all of the numbers all of the letters that's in that verse or all of the words in that verse basically you add up those words you get 2701 Okay, um, which is an interesting number. So um, there's a thing that we know that if you try to divide this number down to its lowest form so that you divide that number so it cannot be divided anymore. Okay, that's called factoring. Right. Yeah. Okay. Again, that's that day y'all didn't go to school or you play hooky or you weren't listening to the teacher that day. <laughs> All right, it's called factoring. And so when you factor, when you factor this number, what you come up with is 37 times 73. Now, that is really important because each one of those numbers, each one of those 37 and 73, that's as, that's as far down as you can divide that number. Okay, those are the those are the those are the two factors. Now you could divide it down. You could do some things with with it a little bit different. But thirty seven seventy three are the two main factors of that of this number. Both of those factors are what are called prime numbers. Okay, all right. So again, they're called prime numbers. Now, um, why is that important? Because a prime number, and we'll put it up there in a moment, but a prime number can only be divisible. You can only divide a prime number by one and itself. Okay? By one and itself. So you cannot divide a prime number by any other number but one, which is really not a number in this sense, but basically it's divided by itself. So when you start dealing with prime and numbers and you start dealing with numbers and dealing with God, that's the way it would be with God that nobody can divide him but himself. Wow. Okay? Yeah. You, you follow? Yeah. That there is no way for him to be divisible. Oh. There is, n there is n there's nothing divisible about God except he divide himself. He said, I swore by no greater because there was no greater than I could swear by. So I swore by myself. Yes. He said, I swore by my, I, I had to swear by myself because I couldn't swear by nothing greater than me. Yes. So I had to swear by myself. So that's, that's a prime. So this very first verse, 
this very first verse is primed. Okay? So you can see God in it immediately. Yeah. All right, everybody? Y'all tracking so far? Yeah. Okay? Again, not trying to go fast on you, but I've got some slides to put up. By the way, live stream, if you go to BethelOIC.church, you can go to the media tab and you can see the slides that will go up for tonight. But this part is not on the slides, okay? This is my prep or my pre-talk or um, to help mother. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. This is my helping mother work, you know, so that I, <laughs> I need her to know what I'm talking about. You, so you good so far, though, ain't you? I know it. I got you. I know if I got you up to this part, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 2701, 37 times 73 equals 2701, 2701 equals Genesis 1 1. So, literally, if I said, I want you to, and, and I'm going slow enough so you can go follow this, if I said 2701, I just said, in the, God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I could just, so I, it's the same thing. If I say 20, if I say God created the heaven and the earth, I just said 2701. Mm -hmm. But if I also have said 37 times 73. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, 37 times 73 is what we would call mirror numbers of one another. Yeah. Okay? They're mirror numbers of one another. Mm -hmm. And because, again, if they're backwards to each other, they're the same number. But, same numbers, but just backwards to each other. And so both of them are prime numbers, though, right. which are very interesting. Now, in Hebrew, what you, what you learn is in Hebrew, there are t what is called the, um, I want to make sure y'all have this. There is the standard value, there is a standard way of writing and there is what is called the ordinal way of writing or the ordinal way and the standard way of Hebrew. Ordinal values and standard values. Okay? Now, there are two ways we're doing numbers with, with Hebrew. And one is Gematra and the other one is what is called ordinal, okay? And what this is, is gematria is when we take the letters and we get their numbers. That the letters get the numbers. So this is aleph equals one in gematria, okay? Interesting enough though, aleph also equal one in its ordinal value. But let's use Tave, okay? Remember, there is a there is a value of of Tave, and and Tave is equal to four hundred in Gematria, but it's equal to twenty two in the ordinal value. Ordinal value is the ordinal value basically is what we would call um, our place value. So A is 1, B is 2, C is 3. So we go A, B, C, C is 3, all the way to Z, which is 26. So we have 26 letters, wherever the letter fall would be its number. Okay? That's the ordinal value. That's the same thing in Hebrew. But the gematria value is the number assigned to the letter based on the, based on the the major and the scribes that assign the numbers to the letters and now that kind of stuff, okay? So that's what I want you to know about that. Okay, I'm going to erase this because I need to show you something else. Alright, so what happens is in in Gematria, I'm going to just write a G, okay? 37 is a number for God. I'm going to write an O for ordinal. In ordinal, 73 is a number for wisdom. Okay? Got that? Got that? But, under the ordinal, 37 is a number for wisdom in Gematria. I mean, let me do it this way. I'm sorry. And then, 
Gematria 73 is a number for God. Okay, so what happens is they are mere numbers of one another and the same thing is happening. 37 is the number for God, but it's also the number for wisdom. 73 is the number for wisdom, but it's also the number for God. Okay. All right. did, did you get that? Yeah. So now they're mirror numbers and they mirror each other. Okay? We could take it even further in this, which is really amazing stuff when you start. Did you, you write all that down? Y'all got that? Okay? Again, this is not in the slides, y'all, that are watching by way of live stream. Um, but so what happened is, so both numbers represent God, both numbers represent wisdom. So we could actually say, by the wisdom of God, the heavens and the earth were created. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Amen. Yes, Did you see that? Yes. By the wisdom of God, because these numbers represent wisdom and God. Uh -huh. By the wisdom of God. Uh -huh. So we can also go back to John 1.1 1, 1 and say, in the beginning was the word, and the word was full of wisdom. Okay. Y'all yeah, yeah. got that? Yeah. And the word was God. Did y'all, did you track? Everybody get that? Okay. So now, again, the main thing I want you to understand is that for right now. Prime numbers. A prime number pretty much tells us that it cannot, we know it cannot be divided by anything but itself. And one, but basically itself, that's what we want to say. And as a result of that, we're saying that that number relates prime some way to God, that it cannot be divided, it's not divisible by anything else but itself. Okay, okay everybody? Y'all yes. doing the shake head, the slow head shake? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Slow head shake. We got slow head shakes. As long as you got, as long as I got them going up and down that way. All right. So, Sheena, give me the first slide. The first slide shows you right now is this is a prime. These are prime. Prime numbers are only divisible by one in itself. See, every other number on the chart is what is called a composite number and it has more than two factors notice this number only have these two factors okay you got that okay a composite number has more than two factors okay okay well we could say two or more actually we could say two or more um, Notice I got one in a different color because of the fact that one is really not a number in a sense because again it's, it's a really isn't it's a number but it's not a part of it's not a factor or a composite number it can't be divided by itself all right let's, let's stop okay so because I don't want to confuse you all right notice all of the prime numbers from one to 120 so what I've given you on this chart are the prime numbers that would relate to your life if you lived to 120. Mm. Wow. Okay, so you would have 30 prime numbers in your lifetime if you lived to 120. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. Y'all see what's going on? Yeah. Everybody tracking. All the yellow ones are prime numbers. Every other number is a composite number. Okay? Got it? Y'all slow shaking? Amen. You're shaking though. As long as you keep shaking, I'm all right. As long as you don't stop shaking. All right, all right. I know, I know. That's why I'm going slow. I'm going slow. I am not trying to go fast and leave nobody behind. We leave no man behind. Yeah. All right, so two is a prime number because it can only be divisible by it's only divisible by itself and one you can only divide two by two you can't divide two by nothing else okay same thing for three you only divide three by three you can't divide it by nothing else everything else you get a remainder yes that's what it means so if i divide and i get a remainder Yes. Oh, you just came? You just got here? I just got on the boat. You just got here? Uh, <laughs> uh, wow. You just got here. You just you just got here? Praise God. Yeah. I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you made it. Because we're getting ready to blow the horn and and, and move on out. Because we, we were going to be way out in the ocean before. 
<laughs> you know, I'm glad your car made it and you got through the gate and everything. Everybody through the gate now? Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> you made it, mother. You, <laughs> so you, you ever on a boat too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You better get you a hammock. Get you a nice hammock and get you a, come on, get you something, some, some lemonade over there. Cause we we, we get ready to go out there, so we we great now, right? Yes, I think. Cause y'all know you're looking at it and go, no, I can divide that number, right? No, you can't. Do, you can, you long, if it leaves a remainder, it's not a prime. Okay, it can't leave no, it can't be no remainders. Okay, all right. So all right, so four is divisible by two, isn't it? More than itself. So it's divisible by itself, it's divisible by two. So it's a composite number. You see that? Everybody follow that? <laughs> you sure? <laughs> see? Composite numbers have more than two factors, but they also have two factors. I'm sorry, I should have put that to two or more, which is what I should have said. Okay? Yeah, I should have said two or more. All right, all right, y'all good? Everybody follow. You sh you sh you I can I go a little faster? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they say, no, don't you even dare speed up. This is a cruising speed right here. Yeah, a policeman on your back, he watching you. Oh, Lord. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. So you're going to have an assignment from here that is beautiful. You're going to love the assignment. All right. But these are the prime numbers. So... What is interesting, I want you to count all the numbers to 37. Count the places all the way up to 37. Count them. Go ahead, do your count. Count 1 through 37. Count. Count all the prime numbers, starting at 2. Don't start at 1. Count all the prime numbers up to 37. Count them all. Come on. How many you got? Wow, you got 12. Everybody got that? Yes. You got 12 prime numbers from 2 all the way to 37. Yes. All right, you got that? So you won't have to count them all? 73 is 21. Okay, it's 21. All right, you probably need to come back down here. Yeah, yeah, they don't know what I'm talking about with that up there they're trying to figure that out because it ain't on their sheets at their cheat sheets so 37 is the 12th prime number 73 is the 21st prime number uh -huh. yeah. and 12 and 21 are also mirror numbers right that's they are you see that they just turned around yeah that's true they're mirror numbers of one another interesting huh Okay, now 12 and 21 are not prime numbers. They have composite numbers, aren't they? Okay. Yeah. All right. So you, it's like you don't know you're going to come to church and learn how to do math at a church and stuff. And, you know, yeah. you don't go to church and learn this kind of stuff, do you? Not too many churches you go and learn, learn math. This, this, <laughs> Bethel University, welcome. Welcome. I hope you paid your tuition. <laughs> we really do. Let's go see the counselor if you have not paid your tuition. Go see the counselor. So 37 is a prime number. 12 is that's the 12th prime number. This is the 21st prime number. That is really interesting. Again, because they're mere numbers of one another. Okay, everybody got that. Okay, you sure? Doing all this because of what we did last week, so that I can make sure you're clear on it. And what happens in John 1.1? 1, 1? In John 1.1, 1, 1, we found the Word, didn't we? Right. Hello. We found the Word in John 1.1. 1, 1. We're trying to determine, even though the Bible tells us, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God and all things were made by him without him was not anything made well we believe that oh and the word became what in verse 14 
flesh and it did what? It dwelt among us. And so we know that word then is Jesus. So in the beginning, we go to Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So when actually we can say in the beginning, Jesus created the heavens and the earth. Because God is using his word to say let there be. And without him was not anything made that was made. Right. So he's saying that there was nothing made that he didn't say. Yeah. Yes. So that means the word was spoken over everything yes. that needed to be created. Yes, that's good. But we still need to find out um, is Jesus God? Because m- m- most would say, I don't know if Jesus is God. Well, this, the way you find it out, I believe, and what I found out is numerically, it helps me to find it out. Why? Because this n- word in John 1.1, 1, 1, the number for it is 373. Well, 37, I got that. I got 37. And I got 73. All in one number. Yes, that's right. Everybody see it? I got 37. And I got, and is in perfect order. They're not mixed up numbers. It's not like 337. It's like the same, the same numbers, but out of order. Or 733. No, no. It is exactly the way it's supposed to be. 37 times 73. So if God's wisdom created the heavens and the earth, I got God's wisdom in one number, which is the word. Right, that's good. That's good. Did everybody follow? Mm-hmm. It's interesting too, it's there three times. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's one, that's over there, but now, in the beginning, <laughs> in the beginning, so we got three times it said word. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And I got, I could then deal with that being three and one. I've got the word three times. Hello? Yes. Hello. So here, this is telling me, so let me tell you something that we may have missed. (laughs) Let me tell you something we may have missed, even though many have talked about it in in one sense of it. We may have missed that nothing is created without the word. Mm. Yes, yes, that's good, yeah. Did you, did you hear that? For all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So that means without the word, that was nothing made. Yes, that's good. Nothing is created without the word. Wow. Yeah, that's good. So, you want to start a new business. What do you need? The word. The word. Yes. You need to be able to speak over that new business the word (laughs) I've told people this more than enough times you want to be healed again the Lord sent his wow really and what did he do with that in Psalms 107 what did he do and he healed them the Lord sent his word and healed them Now, when we hear that and we have heard that, we will clearly say that God sent Jesus to heal us. No, he sent his word to heal us who happened to be made flesh. Come on. I was going to bring my Hebrew, um, my Hebrew um, Aramaic Bible so I could show you and read this out of read the Aramaic out um, uh, St. John 1-1 one, one Aramaic you know um, and read it out of that for you just you could hear um, um, <laughs> um, 
how it sounds different than your same but different than your than your than your English okay uh, the Messiah the Mashiach um, is been sent to heal you so then if I need healing I need to speak that divine word of healing over my life now what we have not realized is that that word works as soon as I start speaking it yes. that's good that's good that's good come on because the word is producing faith yes yes because faith comes by hearing. hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith starts working immediately because the word is there and you now applying word to the situation. Amen. Yes. Are you are you are you tracking with me? Yes. Okay. Now your assignment, which man, I cannot believe I'm still I got that slide up right there. I really don't. This is every time, every time, this is, every time, it's just amazing. Um, so much revelation. The house is full of revelation, amen? amen. There is a, a level of revelation in the house that is really phenomenal. That God has blessed us with an abundance of revelation. Um, and again, I, I, I love seeing people come here and preach and see them get caught up in it. Um, they get caught up in the revelatory um, outpour that's in the house yeah. so I want you to look at all those yellow squares orange yellow squares or whatever color they might be up there all the orange yellow squares are prime numbers to 120 mm -hmm. there's only one place in your Bible that you can find all those numbers mm. wow where you say mother? Go ahead, girl. You better, you better, you better watch out. <laughs> you better watch out. I ain't got no mints up here to give you no mint. I need, I need some mints. <laughs> the only place you can find all those primes are in the Psalms. Wow. It's thirty of them. Your assignment is to read those 30 prime psalms. Wow. See what God might be saying. I finished them all today. I didn't give you the assignment and not do it myself. I have finished them. And they are scrumptious. <laughs> You're going to find that, that any place, God is going to show you in these prime psalms that he is your God and you can trust him. And he will deliver you out of your troubles. It's in all of these prime psalms. It's really amazing. Okay, so... Again, um, go to wait. Where can you go to get this? Go to the go to the website. <laughs> you don't have to try to copy down all those numbers. Just go to the website and open up the PD and just look at it. It's it's there, so you don't have to go through that. All right, but you know, if you want to enjoy yourself, write them down. But they ain't gonna be up there much longer. <laughs> all right, so that's what you need to do. All right, you got it. All right. So now, everybody understand this? Yes. Everybody understand this? Yes, sir. You sure? Yes, sir. Okay. Good. Go to the next slide, please. All right. So last week we talked about this, right? In the beginning. Now, again, so what you see up there now as far as numbers are not, are not, Gamatra values or ordinal values, it is the Strong's Concordance numbers. Okay? That's all that is. It is the Strong Concordance numbers. Okay? And um, so G, whenever you see a G, a G, a, a G represents, a G represents 
Greek. Right? A G represents Greek. An H represents Hebrew. All right? So if I see a G, I know I'm in the New Testament. Right? Right? If I see an H, I know I'm in the Old Testament. Right? All right? So when I'm doing my concordance, and I'm going through my concordance, this is the way I'll go through it. Okay? And again, for your help, Sheena, why don't you bring me up um, blue letter for a second? Um, I'm doing all this for mother, by the way, so y'all can. Y'all just happen to be in here. This <laughs> ain't nothing this way, y'all. This is just for, this is me and her. We're having a session by ourselves. You, <laughs> you know, you know, and so I'm just making sure. At Blue Letter, uh, remember, you got, um, <laughs> <laughs> Blue Letter Bible, and it's dot org, and it's, yep, mm -hmm. okay, dot org. And again, I talked to you many times about the fact that people will not share a lot of times their resources with you. They won't let you know where they're doing their stuff, you know. Some of the things I, some places I go, I won't show you because it wouldn't help you. It would just confuse you, and I don't need you confused. <laughs> But this is one of the places you can go that it won't, it will not confuse you. It will help you. And I'm going to show you another place. And I've, gi I've given this stuff in early morning prayer as well. They can't see this. So they have to <laughs> go out there and, and, and find it. But blueletterbible.org is a great resource. Notice up there where it says verse, word, or topic. As soon as you come to the page, you can write in a verse, a word, or a topic. You can type it in there. And you will get that, okay? And it give, and you can do it in King James and whatever. And when you do that, it will take you somewhere. So why don't we um, put in um, put in um, word? Put in word. Um, yeah, stay there. Just put just type in word up there at the top. Yeah. So when you you click on it, just type in word. And what happens is it's going to give you where that is throughout the entire Bible. Okay. So they're going to show you every place word can be found in the entire Bible. Okay. Now, um, and if so, go back up, Sheena, to verses. Now, once you come there, same thing, it's still up there. Verse, word. Now, let's just um, um, type in G373. Okay. And notice what happened. Slide down. Actually, I gave you the wrong thing, Sheena. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's not G373 because that's the Jamaica value. <laughs> I gave you the Jamaica value. Just, just type in John 1.1. 1, 1. So you can put in a verse. You can put in a word. You can put in the actual Strong's number, and it'll find it as you saw that. So John 1.1, 1, 1, when you come to John 1.1, 1, 1, notice where John, you can read the whole Bible from here. Okay, there are no numbers or nothing there, right? Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to run over there. You're going to hover over twos. And, and you can then go to the Bible. You can go to the commentaries, dictionaries, and all of that. See that? Isn't that nice? Okay, all right. So if you know that, come off of twos for a second. Now just click on the verse. When you click on the verse, this whole panel opens up. When you open up this panel, now you're going to have each individual word and its Strong's number. Okay? You see that? Everybody following. So the word in is G1722. Okay? It's not a lot to that, but still, it has a Strong's number and it has its own. That's how That would be the word in Greek. Okay? The next one is in the beginning. In the beginning is G746. Okay? All right? All right, we'll come back to that. Was with Theos. G2316 is God. Keep going. And there we go. All right, so what was the word that we dealt with last week? Come on, talk to me. What was it? Logo. So G, what, 30? 56 equals logos 
equals word equals 373, and that is Jamaica, right? Everybody got that now. Did everybody follow that? Greta didn't. Greta was up there, and the people don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the people are saying, what is he saying? So G3056 is the, is, the, is the Greek Strong's number, right? Strong's number, the, and then you got Logos is the word, which is word, and G7, and 373 is the Gamacha value. Okay, right? So you got all these different numbers, and you got that stuff. Mother, you follow? Good day, good looking here. You rolling right along. You on the boat. <laughs> you were on the boat before she got there. <laughs> when she got there, you were already lounging. You were down in the lounge. Yeah. <laughs> as long as I got you straight, I'm good. I, I feel like I'm, I'm worth, it's worth a hundred dollars right there. All right. So Sheena, click on click on this for me. So you can come to this and click on the number, and when you click on the number, it'll take you to actual just that particular word. So now you're just at Logos. You're now just dealing with Logos. Now, you notice I have not gotten my message yet. <laughs> because I'm, because Mother and I are having this conversation. If it, were, if it wasn't for that, I could have been finished my message probably by now. But I got you. I, I'm going to make sure you walk out here tonight and you're going to say, I done learned something up in here tonight. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. <laughs> it is my privilege, you glory to God. Now, that's a good teacher for you. Make sure that the one student get it and everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. That's right. All right. So when you go to here, you can, Logos, go ahead and, and you can then hear how to say it. Listen. Strong's G 3056. Lagos. Lagos. See that? So you can do that anytime you want to. Most, most Americans say Logos. Okay? But it's, lo, it's Lagos. Okay? Lagos. Now, if you say Lagos, most people ain't gonna know what you're talking about. Because they ain't never heard Lagos. Like they never heard rather than Suke, Saiki. So they never heard it that way. But we, we need to know. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. All right. So when you scroll down, if you scroll down, what's going to happen is, um, stop right here. The Vines, the Vines Composite Dictionary is all here. The entire Vines Dictionary is in here. You have the Strong's Concordance, right? What you're doing is dealing with the Strong's Concordance. That's what you're dealing with. And you have the entire Vines Dictionary. So everything about Lagos is right there. All you have to do is view entry and you have the whole Vines Dictionary. So the whole definition for Lagos is there. All right, and you can scroll down further. All right, and so you can see all the different, how many times it was used as word, 218 times. It is, come on, saving 50 times, account eight times, speech eight times, word Christ, dealing with Christ seven times, things. So these are all the translations of Logos. And then it gives you the full biblical usage and definition of it. And what we talked about last week was the decree, mandate, or order. Okay? The decree, the mandate, or the order. Anytime speech, the Logos. And so that's why you supposed to be using the decree, the mandate, or the order, which is the word of God. You're supposed to be decreeing the word of God. You're supposed to be decreeing the word of God. You're supposed to be decreeing the word of God. Are you with me? You know, that's why the Bible tells us don't speak your own words, but speak his words. Yeah. Everybody with me? Yes, don't speak your own words, speak his words. Speak, your, speak his word over the situation, over whatever is going to. Speak his word, don't speak your own word. So keep slide on down a little bit more, and you just go all the way through all these definitions. All of them are not that long, but this is, this is a major word account and so we read all this last week okay everybody got that so you good now okay great excellent all right so when you go back to the slides thank you sheena uh, when you go back to the slides so now all of those numbers you just saw you saw all those numbers okay in blue letter right that's what you just saw you saw all these numbers in blue letter that's what you saw 
All right? So 30, 56, and all that, da, 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 da. Okay, so in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the, come on, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. That is amazing. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. <laughs> the Word was with God, and the Word was God. How are you going to be with somebody and be it? You know, it's three and one, right? Okay, so 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 what we need to understand is that this is the way. So 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 grab this with me real quick. Grab this with me. Understand this for me for a second. And, and this is where I think we messed it up. All of our beginning should began with the word. Oh, look at that! All of our beginning should begin with the word. But we tend to we tend to do it and then ask God to come in behind it. Wow. We start trying to speak the word after we're in the thing rather than letting our beginning be there. You see that? What it is, um, here's here here is a um, professional seamstress, tailor, whatever. Um, all them titles she got and machines, the heat on board, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Every piece, every garment mostly will start with a pattern. Yeah. Right. Okay. And again, I can look at that pattern, that, that piece of paper to me. Yeah. It don't mean a whole lot to me. Yeah. But when she looks at the pattern, it means a lot to her. She knows what's going on with that pattern. She can look at that pattern and pretty much tell you what that dress or that suit's going to look like based on the pattern. The word becomes the pattern for the thing to be made. Wow. You, do you, wow. Did you hear what I just yeah. told you? Yeah. Yeah. See, so you now got to speak that word so that you have a pattern. There is no pattern without so without, without the word. So in the beginning was the word. Yeah. So I sent my word. I had to send my word in order for you to get healed. Yeah. You can't, you don't get healed without my word coming yes. because my word is the beginning of everything. Because yes. yes. in the beginning was the word and the bigger word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Yes. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and him was the light was the light of, of men. This is, this is amazing when you really r r check it out. So, your assignment, your assignment as well is you should clearly, let me, let me, this is, this is, this hit me today. I said, there should be competitions really in our hearts of how much word we got in, in a week. Yeah. Yes, sir. We found out something. We found out, we found out that, um, now, I don't know if you're going to be able to find it that fast, Sheena, but um, the, the, the John Bevere um, talk on the word. Um, look, look it up on YouTube. Look up John Bevere, word of God, and it'll probably come up. He's sitting there with another guy. So what happens is the statistics show that you must be. Okay, so, okay, let's, let's wow, so much, so little time. All right, so so here here it is. It has been it has been now proven over a case study of 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 a lot of people that being in the Word on Sunday does nothing for your Christianity. Yes, that's right. Wow. Yes, sir. It's crazy, isn't it? Wow. You wouldn't even like you know no 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 the Word works any kind no. No, it does work all the time. But God is, God is a really, really smart guy. Yes. Did y'all know that? Yes, he is. He's kind of smart, man. He is really kind of smart. I don't know how he come up with this stuff, but <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's kind of smart, dude. I like him. Yeah, he's pretty, pretty good, good, pretty good guy. So what happens is it's like you, you in the word one day, okay? That that was Sunday. Mm -hmm. You you came on Thursday. You in the word again, and you decided during the week to pick it up one more time. 
you're in it three times. It has been proven now that you pretty much, after three times in the word within a week, you're flatlining. Basically saying that you found it. Yeah, I know. Okay, you can bring it over and I'm going to let you play it. It's basically saying that most people, most people, you can go full screen for that. Most people that are in the word one, two, three times in a week have no change in their life. Mm, right. wow. Very little change. <laughs> but, 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 but they're going to say no change pretty much. Mm. No change in their life. No change. Now, this would answer the this would answer a lot of people's questions about the church. They would say, "How could it be that you go to church and you don't look any different from me?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Or the person that's at church go, "I go to church, but my life isn't changed." Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. And they say, but I'm in church on Sunday and I'm reading my Bible on Monday and I did my, I was at church on Wednesday and it still ain't no change. This is frustrating. Mm -hmm. So let's play this so you can hear it. I want you to hear it before I even conclude because it's so amazing. It's only two minutes. So let's listen to it. There was a recent study by the Center for Bible Engagement where they pulled 40,000 uh, uh, general population in the U.S. from 8 to 80, and they just wanted to see how we are engaging with Scripture. Right. And they discovered something that actually became kind of the profound discovery of the entire study. It, they weren't even looking for this, and this is kind of became the highlight of the study. Right. Um, when we're in the scripture one time a week, and that could be church on Sunday. That's pastor saying you open your Bible, we hear the message. One time a week had negligible effect on some key areas of your life. So I'm going to spell that out more here in a moment. Two times a week negligible effect. Now at three times a week, there was a blip on the map, like there was a heartbeat. Something happened, again, a heartbeat. Okay. But here was a profound discovery. When we're in the scripture four times a week, it literally spikes off the chart. You would expect that it would be one, two, th I mean, there would be a gradual incline right. on the effect and impact that would have in your life, but it was literally one, two, three, four, something radically happens. Okay, you got my curiosity. To this what, extent. What kind of behavior is being affected? Feeling lonely drops 30%. Stop. Wow. And four times a week in the Bible. Four times a week in the Bible. Okay. Stop, stop. Wow. Feeling lonely drops 30%. So the person who goes to church and have those three engaging times in the word and they are, uh, they are, they feel lonely, they feel depressed, they feel, you know, I don't know how to make it. It's because they're not engaged four times a week. Wow. Wow. When they get to four, he says, it spikes off of the chart. God's a smart guy. Yes, he is. He's kind of smart. He he's trying. He, why why would he say that? Because he's making sure that you're not trying to use him, but you have relationship with him. Yes, you're not going to have relationship. You this he, this is not about you picking up a Bible every once in a while and reading a little passage in the morning. Yeah. No, I, he wants engagement with you. Yes, yes. And so when you view after this thing four times a week on your own. He know he knows you after him. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. I believe there's a buildup effect, but keep let play, play. So thirty percent loneliness drop. Now watch what happens. Go. On. We can abide. Okay. Anger issues drop thirty two percent. Stop. Uh, bitterness. And Stop. Anger thirty two percent just drop. Just just I I I, I don't know what I'm, I don't get angry no more. I stop all the anger stuff in my life. What is in the world? And again, these I'm telling you. These statistics are not just for the marginal Christian. These are for those that think that they're in there with God. But they're doing more talking to God in prayer than they are reading of the word. Yes. Yes. Do, you, do you hear what I'm talking about? Okay, I'm telling you that's a, that's a major part of the, Christ, of the Christian walk now. Because we think we can just pray and talk to God, but we're not diving into the word. And we're not allowing the word to become the beginning of everything. Yes, sir. Okay, go to the next thing. Go the relationships, next. marriage, a relationship with your kids, and so on, drops 40%. Mm -hmm. 
alcoholism wow, drops 57 percent wow feeling spiritually stagnant you know if there was one area when i'm talking with people that that they'll be honest about is they just feel spiritually stagnant. Ask them the question, how much time are you spending in the scripture? If they're in the scripture four times a week or more, it drops 60%. Wow. Viewing pornography drops 61%. That's very important. Now, on a flip positive side, sharing your faith wow. jumps 200%. Wow. Because you have a confidence in God's word. And then discipling others jumps 230%. That's, that's amazing right there. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Okay, and all that has to do with what? Word engagement. That's right. Yes. <laughs> that is just word engagement. We, we, we're not talking about, watch this in this case, showing yourself approved. Right. Right. We're not talking about study. We're not mentioning studying the word. We're just talking about reading. And engaging in the word four times a week will keep you long. So if if you know if I didn't have my phone turned down, probably by now it would have gone off. There are church bells that go off on my phone um, that tells me throughout the day at least three times a day to read the scripture. Yeah. The ding ding like church bells, and it gives me a scripture to read. So because that's the app I have, so that I can stay engaged with the word. By the way. If I'm not able to get to it, it reminds me. Even though I didn't, I can't get to it right now. Those bells just told me because they wake me up in the middle in, in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning, going ding dong ding. I say I ain't reading nothing right now. I ain't getting up. I just been up. I just going to bed. Right? I've been up since three thirty. So, but still, it's there to remind me. So again, your beginnings. Listen to me really good. Your beginnings must be by way of the word. Those places that you have begun. Listen. Listen, and you didn't begin with the word. Go back. Did you hear what I just told you? Go back and find word that fit what you need to be doing. <laughs> Hosea finds out his name is in the Bible and just goes off. <laughs> that somebody saw him before he was ever born. Come on, are y'all with that? It's amazing. So that was that was not even you didn't you didn't have no full Bible. You just had a prophet. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Go to the next slide, please. Go to the next slide. I'm way behind. Okay. So let's keep let's keep going because I went we just went through that. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Right there. Stop. Stop. Go back down. Okay. Great. So when we look at when we look at that number um, and and we find out that the word is three seven three. Okay. And and I told you, you last week, and I think this is where I stopped. Here are the other. Here are some other places that that number shows up. That three seven three number. Now that I know that that three seven three number also represents the word. Now I'm looking for other places that I might find it. And look at what, look at Psalms twenty nine and three. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. That phrase in Psalms 29.3 is 3.7.3. And what did it say? The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. That sounds like the word to me. I ain't getting no help from y'all. Goodness gracious of life. Look at resurrection. Resurrection is 3.7.3. So then I could say again that the word, what was resurrected? The word, word. the word was resurrected. Come on, come on. So that was nothing that could keep him down. And I love Isaiah 61 and 1 because it's talking to us. Arise, shine. Yes. It's 373. You arise, shine. I guarantee you, you will if the word is paramount in your life if the word is you're going to be you're going to be arising you're going to shine into the things that God has for you so this is an amazing number um, there's more but I wanted you just to have those go to the next one please Sheena come on so go back to our old faithful Hebrews 4 and 12 Hebrews 4 and 12 says for the word again that's the lagos right how many how you know it's the lagos mother Wait. How you know? Come on. You gotta know. You gotta look up there. How you know it's a Lagos? 
Wait, what her name? Not, not good mate you. Oh, mm -mm. Okay. How you know it's Lagos? Sister Trussa, how you know it? Yeah, it is the word, right. But how do you know it's the word Lagos? No. Go ahead, girl. Uh, 56. Go ahead. Give it, get, come on, tell mother about that one and let her know it. I know about it on, the on the way home, right. That's right. Make sure she know. <laughs> you got it. By the G3056, because G3056 is the Greek concordance number, right? Okay, and so that's the word logos. That's the way I know it's logos. Because I could have word and it may not be G3056. Yeah. It may be another word for word, but it's not logos. Yes, yes. You, you got that? Yeah. Okay. It could be rhema. Mm -hmm. And if it's rhema, it's going to have a whole nother number attached to it, right? Remember, rhema is the revealed word. Right. Right? right. Everybody got that? Yeah. Okay, good. So for the word of God is what? It's alive. It's alive and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing of marismos, the dividing of thunder, of what? Soul and spirit and marrow and thoughts and intents of the heart. It's a discerner of thoughts and intents. So every part of this, every part of you, which is down at the bottom. Every part of you should begin with being dealt with by the Lagos, which is the Word. So the Word has a deal with, watch, you say, I don't like how I act. Then you must apply the sword to that area. You must divide it asunder. You must say, okay, how do I change laziness? That's good. You see that? Yeah. I'm lazy. I, you got to be. You, you got you, In order to get to that, you got to use a commandment. Which one you got to use? That's which, which commandment is this now? The eleventh commandment. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, by last week, say which commandment is that? That's the one that we made up in here. <laughs> Thou shall not lie to thyself, which is the eleventh commandment, because most people do. All right. So in order to say I am I'm lazy, you gotta you gotta tell yourself you're the truth. Yeah. So if I'm lazy, I need to now become diligent. I've got to apply the word to my soul. Uh -huh. That's right. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I'm frustrated. I'm confused. Mm -hmm. the, word. Yeah. the word. Matter of fact, the Bible says, put a knife to your throat. It's interesting. If you overeat. Now, is it telling you cut your throat? <laughs> no, it isn't. What is he telling you to do? The knife is the word. Two edged sword. Apply the word to your throat. He says, apply the word to your overeating. Wow, that's good. So that you'll stop overeating. Hallelujah. That's good. That's good. And we'll go on a diet rather than apply the word. Come on, hello. We're on the keto, we're on the whoever. We're gonna say, let me get on this new diet plan. And God said, no, just apply your just apply the word to yourself. Just apply the word to yourself and you begin to lose weight based on applying my word because you began with the word. And oh my Lord, my time is gone. I can't believe this. Y Mother, you took all of my time. All of it. No, no problem. Don't be sorry about it. Don't be sorry about it. Don't be, I'll send you my cash app. I just... <laughs> So, 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 you eat, but, but the thing that's amazing in here is the joints and the marrow. Guys, the joints and the marrow, you know that's dealing with your body. So anything that has to do with your joints and your marrow, which is your body, period. But it could be your joints, your joints and your marrow. It could be, you could, you could, you could say my knees are always hurting. Well, apply the word. Yes. You apply liniment, Bengay, all of that. <laughs> yo, yo, don't nobody use Bengay no more, do they? Don't nobody use Bengay. That was some stinking stuff, wasn't it? 
Ben gave us some stinky stuff, right? But it's still out there. They got it now non-smelly or something. Yeah. That's what they say anyway. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it still smell. <laughs> so, but apply the word to the joints. Wow, that's good. That's well, we already taught one scripture and he sent his and did what? Yeah. What part of me? Yeah. All, all of me. All of so, Lord, if you sent your word, yeah. why is this now? If you sent your word to heal me, then by that I am healed. Yes. And God, I love the fact that you did that for me. Yes. I love the fact that you thought about me before I got here. Yes. God, I love you for taking care of my body yes. and my joints are now coming in alignment. I love the fact that I can move and I can shake and I can do everything I want to do because, Lord, you have healed me. Yes. What did I connect to my faith? Word. No, I did. But what did I? Love. Huh? Love. Because yes. faith works by love. I've connected love to my faith. I love the fact that you're doing this. God, I love you. Man, I love you. God, I love you. Thank you, Lord. My knees work just like they need to. Glory to God. I can go up and down the stairs. I can bend. I can stoop. God, I love it. Man, I love it, man. I love it. I feel like I will, I'm a young man. I love it, God. That's good. I love what you've done for me. I love the way you think about us before we ever need you. Before you, we ever knew you, you were thinking about us. Before we could ever ask you for healing, you had already healed us. And you had already sent your word to heal us. You see? See how I'm talking to the Father? You, that didn't, it don't sound prayer. It don't sound religious, does it? No. It sounds relational, doesn't it? Yes. That's right. Because yes. love is relational. And so my, my joints and my marrow. Now, the most important thing in this entire litany of, 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 of things, of, of saying the soul, the spirit, the joints, the marrow, the thoughts, I think the most important thing is not just the heart, but I think it's the intents. It's the I think the intents are the most important thing that is in that list because it is your intentions, your intentions that you really won't repent for. Yeah. You intend to do something, but you never repent for it. Wow. That's true. You, you hold on to those intentions. Mm -hmm. And nobody even know you have those intentions. Wow. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And most people won't even repent for those intentions. But the word finds those intentions. Yes, it does. A word, as you're in the word, the word will bring up those intentions to you and go, you see this? Why are you holding on to these intentions? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you go, yeah, no. And I guarantee you that it's difficult to let go intentions. Oh, yes. yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Because <laughs> intentions are sneaky. <laughs> and you act like God don't even know you intend to do it. But the word finds it. Okay. I, I, I got give me five minutes and I'll be gone. One more slide. I'm I don't know I'm back at I ain't going nowhere. I'm still at <laughs> I'm still at last week. I did all these new slides, didn't I? I got new slides all in, but praise God. Go and look at them anyway. It'd be great looking. So St. John 1, St. John 1 and 14, what? And the word. What word what's the, what's the, what word is there? What's worded for word? Yeah, how we know that, mother? Yeah, that's right. We know it there because why? We got G what? 3056 behind it, right? Yeah. And that's the number. That's his number. And the word was made what? Yeah. That's important. I want you to meditate on that for a moment. I want you just to take a moment and meditate on that. Just a moment. Because I know you've been in Sunday school your whole life. You heard this verse forever. And you've never really taken time to think about it. But it says that the word was made flesh. So <laughs> uh, you got to you got to meditate on it. You got to meditate on it. Well, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So so in essence, wait a minute now. Let me let me see if I can get this right. Let me see if I can get this right. Wait a minute now. I have words, and my words are with me. And actually, and, and, and actually my words have to be me. 
because they are my words. So then I take my words out of me and make a man. Oh, you ain't going to help me. You got to meditate, man. I take my words and make a, make a man. So the man that's made have to be me. The man that, the man that made can't be nobody but me. Philip, when you see me, you've seen the Father. How mm. yeah. okay. I ask you to see the Father when you see me, you've seen the Father. Yes. Yes. I was sent from the, from the Father mm. to do the will of the Father. Yes. My, my, my. Yes, that's good. That's good. And what did it do? It dwelt Among. amongst us. Yes, yes. So God comes to the earth in the form of a man to dwell amongst the creatures he created. Full of glory. <laughs> Grace and truth. Come on, somebody. Wow. Wow. <laughs> And to as many as received him, to them, now here you, here you go, we're going we're gonna to close out here. To them gave he power yes. to become sons. the sons of God. Thank you, wait a minute, man, wait a minute, wait a minute. To as many as received him, yes. we received this one that was made flesh. Uh -huh. To them yes. that received him, yes. he gave power yes. to become Yes. So how do we become sons of God? By the indwelling of the word. Yes. We become what he is. Yes. Come on somebody. Yes. Because if his word is God, then his word in us become God so that we now function as sons of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's good. Yes, yes. Yes. Put some water in the pool. Hallelujah. Yes. Put some water in the pool. Oh, that was good. Why? Because, come on, I, his word. So your intake mm -hmm. of the word of God is so that you can become yes. sons. Mm. Yes. That is yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. That is awesome. And that's the only ones that the Holy Ghost is leading. Yes, that's right. For the Spirit of God is leading the sons of God. That's right. Come on, somebody. That's right. It is the Holy Ghost. He says he he come on. He leads the sons of God. Yes, yes. He's not leading anybody else. He's leading the sons of God. So they are they that are eating of the Word of God. They're becoming the Word of God. Ah, that is ah my 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 my. Anytime we are failing, all we have to do is look at our diet. Yes. Wow. 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 I promise you, if you're not, if it's not working right, look at your diet. I guarantee you, your diet in the word is off. I, I guarantee you, when it's not, when it and not functioning like you wanted to function, your diet in the word is off. He said, "What do I read? How do I go about doing it? The Bible. Read it. That's what you read." He said, "What part of the Bible? The Bible. Yeah. See again, because everybody wants a systematic. Give me a cookie cutter, whatever. No, the Bible. Jump in." there and just start going for it. Again, if, it, if you got to do those those 30 yes. prime psalms, uh, hallelujah, yes. just get in the word and make sure you have the engagement in the word. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. Who's leading who in the word of God in your household? Who's leading who? Wow. Wow. Yes, sir. wow, that's good. Let's become body of Christ. Live stream. Let's become yes. sons yes. of God. Yes. Let's become word people. Let's become yes. so saturated yes. in the word of God. Yes. Glory to God that you can't tell where we start and where the word ends. Yes. For the engrafted word. 
The grafted word is able to save your very souls. So let's get engrafted. Let's get, become one with Jesus by way of the word. And let's see what he will do with us in this last move of the spirit of God on the face of this planet. In Jesus name. God bless you. Have a good evening. Thank you so much for being with me. I love you. I love you. Hopefully you'll be with me on, on Sunday. We are unfinished. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh, yes. So what'd you learn? That was prime rib in 30 minutes. <laughs> 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 <laughs>